Hi Clay Studio students and friends. As most of you know, my name is Karen and I'm the education manager at the Clay Studio. While we're all on quarantine, uh, I figured we could hopefully do some clay at home. If you have clay, you're welcome to follow along in these demos. Um, and if not, you're welcome to just uh, watch what happens. Um, so today I am in my basement studio here. Um, and we're just going to start out really simple. Um, I'm going to talk, talk to you about some tools uh, that I have found around my house that uh, hopefully you can find around your house too. And uh, then we'll get started. Today we're just going to make something very simple, a coaster to start out with. Um, I hope you'll follow along. So the first thing that I have in front of me is some canvas. Um, it's actually not like the canvas that we use on our tables at the Clay Studio. It's really uh, like upholstery sort of fabric. Um, I have two different versions here. One is sort of more canvas-like. I don't know if you can see this up close, um, but any kind of fabric will do. It's just so that uh, when we roll out our slabs, we don't have the clay stick to this metal table that I'm working on. Um, I recommend this really for any kind of surface that you're working on, whether it's wood um, or metal or plastic. Most of the time clay will stick to a tabletop if it doesn't have something on it. So um, see if you can look around your house and just get some fabric, cotton, uh, really anything will do. The more light canvas it is, the better. Um, the other thing that will work well in this situation um, is drywall. I just have some squares of drywall. If you have some laying around in your basement or house, uh, you have an extra piece, you could just pick some up um, and cut it down to size, whatever size table you're working on, um, it'll work well. But for today, I'm just gonna use this, uh, this fabric along with you guys. The other tools that I so far have found, um, I have a rolling pin. Um, if you don't have one, we're gonna talk about options, uh, other, other ways to roll out a slab. Um, but a rolling pin, if you have one, would be helpful for this. I also have just a regular pair of scissors. Um, and I actually happen to have a, a sponge, a pottery type sponge. If you don't have a pottery sponge or like a sea sponge, then the other good option um, is just a regular kitchen sponge. I'm gonna cut this down to size so that uh, it's not so big and bulky to work with while we're doing stuff. Mine has this like, you know, scratchy score pad fabric, whatever it's called on it. Um, I think it'll be all right, but we're gonna find out. So I'm just gonna cut this into like thirds just so that it's more manageable to work with. Obviously, uh, I have scissors here, and um, I just grabbed some other household items. Um, I have a butter knife, an oversized straw. I'm thinking about making some textures with that. Um, I have a fork for scoring. Uh, just any metal fork or even a plastic fork, if you have one, will, will do. Um, I have some chopsticks. I'm not sure what we're going to do with those yet, but I thought maybe we would... Uh, experiment. I just have a cup of um, water, uh, you know, tap water is just fine. Um, the, the mine's in a Talenti container, as you can see. This is Corinne's favorite kind of container. Hi, Corinne. Um, and a plastic lid, which is, we're going to use as our uh, template. Uh, you know, whatever size coaster you feel like making um, is fine. I'm going to make something a little bit larger than most of my cups because uh, as we know, it'll shrink a little bit in the kiln. I also have a, a spatula that I found upstairs. Um, it has this nice line quality to it and I'm gonna try to put some texture uh, into my slab using uh, this spatula template. And then if you don't wanna actually get your spatula dirty and get clay on it or any of your other tools, you can always just put them in some kind of plastic. So if you have saran wrap at home, this is like a plastic newspaper bag, um, but I'm just going to uh, put it, put my spatula in here so I don't get it dirty, and I should be able to still press it into the clay pretty well uh, when we get there. I'm trying to think. That's all that I really have here, um, and hopefully we'll be able to just work with these kinds of things. Um, I've, I have some porcelain 257. Um, 
that's sort of our, our standard porcelain that we use at the clay studio um, but I'm assuming most of you guys don't have a wire tool uh, so we'll just get started by using our butter knife to cut some clay off this hunk this is not something I normally would recommend but if you don't have a, a wire tool what else are you really gonna do So I, I think I probably want about a pound of clay. Um, I'm gonna guess that this is just about a pound. Um, and then I'm just gonna wedge it. And make sure to wrap up the rest of your clay when you're not using it. Okay, so I always recommend wedging clay before you use it gets the air bubbles out, mixes up the molecules. Um, you know, it might not be overly important in this situation, but it's good practice. My clay's a little stiff as porcelain tends to be. Ooh, sorry for all the noise from this metal table. Um, so I'm just gonna wedge for a few minutes uh, and then we'll go from there. All right, so I finished wedging this clay, um, and because I know I'm gonna make a slab um, from it, I sort of have just wedged it into more of like a, a longer flat shape. Um, if you're used to wedging, you know, for the wheel and you kind of do your spiral wedging, um, what's gonna end up happening is that you're gonna get sort of more of like a, you know, a, a ball shape, right? With your spiral wedging. Um, what you can do is a couple of things. Just kind of squeeze it out with your hands. Um, and if you don't have that hand strength or if your clay is a little too hard to do that, um, the other thing I would recommend is either getting a rolling pin or um, if you don't have a rolling pin, try, try to find something else that's pretty much round. I'm gonna show you how to use this ball jar to um, you know, use it as, as a rolling pin. If you have anything else that's sort of hard and round, even um, you know a coffee mug with without a handle, more like a tumbler, um, that would probably work. Uh, a pipe would work. P you know, a PVC pipe would um, would work pretty well. But let's just experiment with how to do this with uh, a glass ball jar. Let's hope I don't break it. So I'm just gonna kind of use it back and forth as if. Um, it was a rolling pin and I know I want to go in both directions because my goal with this is just to make it uh, a flat slab. I'm gonna flip it over, keep rolling it out. It's not obviously as easy as it would be if you had a rolling pin but for those of you who aren't bakers out there you might not have a rolling pin at your house so um, you know we can figure this out together. The other thing that um, you often will see people do is sort of throw a slab out. Um, and what I mean by that, this is going to make so much noise, my apologies. What I mean by that is you basically hold your, your fabric still um, and you're just going to sort of drop and pull. And as you're dropping, you're going to sort of grab the clay and pull it this way so that you are sort of throwing the slab out. I'm sure there's better videos of this out there that are less noisy. My apologies. So if you just keep doing that in multiple directions, see how I'm sort of tossing it away from me? You can do it on the edges too. Eventually you're gonna get a pretty even slab. Um, just keep flipping it over. Again, not the best table for this. Um, and then once you kind of get it to be thinner and flatter, you can go back to either your, your glass jar um, or if you're lucky enough to have a rolling pin, that'll make this job a lot quicker. So just kind of use your rolling pin and just make sure to roll in every direction so that uh, if the clay wants to warp, it won't. 
If you're lucky enough to have a slab roller at your house, please by all means skip the, the mason jar and just head over to your slab roller. So I'm basically just gonna roll this out until, uh, you know, it's a little bit thinner than this. This is a little too thick for what I'm looking for, um, but you don't want it to get too thin because then obviously it's more likely to warp and crack in the kiln, especially if you're using a porcelain clay body. Okay, and then um, I think the next step is to see how many of our coaster shapes we're gonna get on here. I think we're still just gonna get one, um, but that's good for now. Okay, so now that I have my slab rolled out, um, I think I'm gonna do the texture before I actually cut out the coaster. Um, and that's because I think I can get a deeper impression uh, with the tools. Um, before I actually cut it out. So as I said earlier, I found this spatula that I thought had a really nice line quality. Um, I hope you can see it in this video. Um, and I think I'm gonna sort of use this spatula uh, to impress the, some lines into my coaster. If you don't have a spatula or you don't want to Sacri sacrifice your spatula to the clay gods. Um, that's totally understandable. You could use anything else. Um, you could use chopsticks. Um, and what I recommend with the chopsticks is just, you know, putting the plastic down and then you can sort of make a pattern. If you have many different chopsticks, you're welcome to, you know, make a line. If you have toothpicks, you could use those. I couldn't find any of them. Um, and then what I will recommend is going back to either your uh, jar or um, your rolling pin if you have one and just rolling whatever you're impressing into it in there that'll sort of help the the tool get pushed into the clay um, and it'll kind of be more even and it'll, it'll look like a nicer pattern at the end. Um, I just use the, the chopsticks for it and I'm also going to show you how to do it with the spatula. Uh, with the spatula, I'm gonna actually put the whole spatula into this newspaper bag. And then I think I should be able to get a pretty nice line quality just by pressing this into the clay using my jar. If you don't have a ball jar, um, you could use a salsa jar, you could probably use even a, a filled, um, you know, can of beans or something. Really anything that's round will uh, do this successfully. And you're just going to really press down into it so that the spatula makes some lines. Um, and you can see it's sort of a different line quality uh, from the, the chopsticks. Let's see if we can get it on here from the chopsticks versus the spatula. Uh, I like the spatula one better because it's sort of softer lines. So I'm gonna probably lay the spatula over it in sort of a crisscross direction, like so, you can see the lines. I'm gonna crisscross it uh, and press it in there again. And uh, we'll see what that looks like. So now there's sort of this crisscross pattern that's happening in this clay. I mean, this is pretty pretty basic stuff. For those of you that are more advanced, I apologize. We're just working with what we have here. Uh, and I don't have many of my pottery tools. Um, I don't know if you guys do or not. So I'm getting this overlapping line quality that, that I'm excited about. And I'm, then I'm gonna just take my template, in this case, you know, this uh, 
take out food lid um, and I'm just gonna put it over my favorite part of the of the texture and then I'll cut it out mind you if you have a pin tool or an exacto knife or um, anything that's fancier than this butter knife I think that'll probably work better um, but I'm assuming you guys uh, hopefully most of you have a butter knife at home and uh, I'm just gonna show you how to how to work with that so I'm just tracing this lid um, trying to stay as close to it as possible so I get a nice even cut um, you could also just fully press the lid into the clay uh, sort of like a cookie cutter situation and if you had a, a big circular cookie cutter that would obviously work really well um, I do not have one of those here so I'm just gonna peel this out and then you can see my rough edge circular slab um, with this nice texture overlapping in here uh, and then the next thing I'm going to do is sort of smooth out this edge so you can start by doing that with your finger but um, it might be a little too chunky and you might want to grab your kitchen sponge and just start to smooth it out with that sponge. Now that I have a, a nice texture and I have my, my circle cut out, um, I'm trying to think about the, the function of this coaster and um, I'm thinking that when I make coasters, usually I'm using some kind of liquid that uh, is either too hot or too cold. And especially if it's too cold, like a nice cool glass of lemonade or something, it's gonna have condensation around it. Um, or like I'm drinking my coffee and inevitably some drips down the side. Um, so I kind of want to have some kind of a lip on this so that the, you know, the condensation or the coffee can't just sort of roll off of this coaster. Um, and so I'm thinking for now, I have a couple of choices. I could roll out a little coil and like make a little rim. Um, and I think I might do that. Okay, so once I have the slab cut out and this nice texture impressed into here, can you see that? There you go. Um, from my spatula, I am now gonna roll out a coil to, um, slip and score it to the edge. So to get a nice coil, you wanna start out probably with a little more clay than you think you need. Um, so I'm just gonna start out with a nice handful uh, of clay. And I just start by sort of squeezing it into a pretty thick coil. Um, this just sort of, it's like almost like wedging it. Um, and it'll sort of help speed up the coil making process. Once it's longer than my the width of my hand, then I can start rolling that coil out. Move my slab out of the way. Hope you guys can all see this. Um, and I'm just gonna hold my fabric down on the table so it doesn't sort of roll with the coil. And I'm just gonna roll out this coil um, going back and forth. If you can see, my hand is all the way at the back of the coil right now, and then it's gonna come up towards the camera. Um, and I'm just rolling back and forth, and I typically use mostly the palm of my hand and not so much my fingertips. So if you can see, I'm sort of rolling from here to here with my hand. You can kind of see where the clay is, palm, and mostly the little pads of my hand here. Um, and I kind of keep my hand stiff and don't apply too much pressure um if your if your coil starts to become more of an oval shape just stop and figure out where that oval shape is happening you can sort of tap it out so that um it gets back to more round the thing that's happening with my clay and i don't know if you can see it from there but let me see if i can get a good angle on this what's starting to happen is there are these little cracks starting to form 
Um, and that's just because the clay, this porcelain's a little bit dry. It's been sitting around uh, while I make this video. And so what I often like to do um, when the coils are getting too dry is just put a little bit of water on the canvas. Um, I'm just gonna take a damp but not dripping sponge and I'm just gonna sort of moisten the canvas here um, and then start to roll again. If you get it too wet, you're gonna notice that your hand gets all slippery. Uh, it's not optimal. Just move the, the coil away from that really damp spot. So for me, the goal is to sort of roll out a coil that's, that can wrap all the way around this coaster that I'm making. Um, that way it can act as sort of a rim, hold my cup in place, you know, keep the condensation from, you know, dripping onto the, the table below the coaster. Um, and so I'm just going to try to roll out a super thin coil that can act as that rim. Um, and it takes a little, a little doing. Have some patience with this uh, if you can and just you know keep rolling out back and forth um, as I said if it gets a little too dry just add a little moisture to your canvas and we're gonna just keep rolling If you like to do two hands, you're welcome to do that. I feel uncomfortable right now because I'm trying to hold this fabric down. Um, you know, if you have some some C clamps laying around, if you have if you have a wood shop, uh, my suggestion would be C clamp this fabric to the table. It'll be way easier. You could probably also duct tape it if you don't care about your tabletop um, or any other mechanism to keep the fabric from moving would allow for two-handed coil rolling, which would be preferable in this situation. Um, but with minimal tools, we can still get the job done. So I'm just going to keep rolling this out. Uh, and like magic, I, I'm on a cooking show, so I have one that's already as long as I need it to be. So now I have my coil. That's a, a good size to wrap all the way around the top edge of this coaster. Um, and I even have it, it's a little bit extra long here. So um, what I'm going to do is slip and score um, or scratch and attach or whatever you want to call it. Uh, my coaster is drying out just a wee bit, so I'm going to moisten it. With this sponge and then I'm just gonna use my fork to score. Um, I know that both my coil and my coaster slab uh, are a little bit drier than I would like them to be so I'm really gonna spend some time scoring this so that the coil will stay. And add a little more water here. Score one more round. And I can score my coil. Score all the edge of your coil here. So once your whole coil is scored and your the whole rim of your slab going all the way around is scored together, uh, I would just sort of press them together, pressing down. I'm keeping my finger on this outside rim here as I press so that the coil can stay on top of the slab and not on the exterior of the slab.
gonna break off the coil. And I have a pretty basic little textured poster with a coil around the top. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just start to smooth out this seam here so that it really feels like one piece. Um, and at the same time, uh, sort of try to do a little bit more uh, smoothing out of this coil so it looks less like a coil. So I'm just going to wet my fingers. Uh, if you have a lazy Susan or even better, a banding wheel, that would really help at this moment to sort of get you to be able to apply some even pressure to the rim of this. Um, I have neither, uh, and I don't know if you do or not, so we're just gonna hold, I put the coaster on the template that we've been using, um, and we're just gonna sort of hold it, being careful, and we'll see what happens here. I want it to all be smoothed out. Uh, I use my fingernail a lot to smooth things out because it's sort of harder than the, you know, the bottom of my thumb. Um, it kind of acts as like a wooden, mo wooden modeling tool if we don't have a wooden, wooden modeling tool. Um, if you have a, a plastic rib or a rubber rib, now would be the time to break that out. Um, but assuming you don't have one of those, we're just gonna use our fingers to sort of smooth all of this out without trying to mess up the texture that's underneath here too much. So this edge is important to me because it sort of makes makes it feel um, like the difference between just a coil sitting on the surface of this slab and um, something that really fits in as a part of the, the overall piece. So I'm going to sort of take my, my pointer and my thumb and pinch them into sort of like a V shape almost and then run that along the outside of this coil and the inside. I'm gonna stand up and show this to you a little bit closer. So if you typically throw, you might sort of make the shape for the top rim of say a cup or something that you're gonna put your lip to. Um, but in this case, I just sort of want this to blend in better. And so I'm making this sort of, I don't know, I'm calling it a V shape, right? And then squeezing that along. Uh, if you don't mind sort of that coil look, you're welcome to just sort of leave it as is, but uh, I kind of wanted this to be more incorporated into this lab, so that's why I'm doing this. Now I'm gonna, I kind of wet this a lot and I messed with it a lot and it's getting a little sloppy. The porcelain's turning into butter. So I'm just gonna wait a few minutes before I keep working on it. So uh, I'm gonna probably wait 10 or 15 minutes and then come back at this. Okay, so I've let this dry out for probably 15 or 20 minutes. Um, this is just so that it's no longer wet to the touch. Uh, you know, if it's really warm in your house, you might give it a little less time. If it's cool and damp, uh, you might wanna give it a little more time. But my goal was just so that it was no longer like wet and sticky. Um, once that tackiness is gone uh, and it's a little bit more stable, you should be able to sort of gently hold it. Um, and uh, the next thing I'm going to do is take a, a damp chopstick um, and just smooth out this interior edge. Um, that's just so that that scoring that I 
made before uh, sort of disappears and it gives a little little bit of like a an interior edge uh, down here um, and then I think I'm gonna probably add some kind of texture to this rim um, as, a, as a last step here If you don't have a chopstick, uh, you could probably use even like the, the other side of a, of a fork. Like this end of a fork probably would work out pretty well if you didn't have a chopstick um, accessible or, you know, really any other sort of blunt tool um, that you find around your house would be fine. Even like a, you know, an unsharpened pencil would probably work out pretty well. I'm just cleaning up that edge I just made with the chopstick. And uh, trying to decide what my last steps are going to be here. I want to make sure that this bottom is nice and clean. And then also uh, do something with the rim. I think because I used uh, these tools before, I'm just going to continue to use sort of the flat side of this chopstick here. And I'm just going to press into this just to give it some more visual texture, uh, I guess actual texture too. And then you can think about um, what kind of glazes you're going to use once we all get back into the studio. Uh, something like maybe the Tosh white uh, or the Tosh green would look really nice, you know, filled into these cracks. That sort of rutile aesthetic uh, would look nice on the rim here. Um, so just keep in mind, you know, if you're familiar with our studio glazes, what you're thinking about using uh, while you're making these decisions about texture, etc. This is sort of starting to look like an ashtray. Uh, you know, maybe you want to use it as an ashtray or uh, as a little pot holder or something. Whatever, whatever you're interested in is fine. I just thought I would add a little bit of visual uh, interest around this rim here. So now I have this fun little coaster that I made in not too long bring it closer so everybody can see. So you can see there's a couple different textures happening here. It'll nicely hold my liquids and keep the condensation um, from getting to my coffee table. Um, and I'm gonna let it dry out slowly and uh, one day it'll get bisque fired at the clay studio as long as you're a spring term student. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this first clay at home video and um, please stick with us. There will be more to come. It was good seeing you all. Take care and uh, stay safe. Bye guys.